Now, so far, we've considered a wire loop filled with air. Here in the middle of the loop, there's uh, air. Is that the best design we can come up with for our magnetotorquers? Or should it be filled with a, another material? If, for example, we could put a material inside the coil that would help the coil's magnetic moment align even better with the Earth's magnetic field, maybe we would need less current in the coil to make the magnetotorquer work. Let's examine our current carrying loop a bit more. For example, we learned earlier that a current flowing in a wire creates a magnetic field around that wire. So if you have I by the right hand rule, we would have B flowing around it. Well, our loop is made out of wire with current flowing in it, so there must be a magnetic, magnetic field around our current carrying loop, around each section of the current carrying loop. In what direction is the magnetic field generated by this loop? By the right hand rule, each side of the carrying, current carrying loop will create a magnetic field, and the magnetic field contributions from all four sides of the wire reinforce each other in the middle of the loop. So here in this region, they're all uh, aligned and flowing together. As a result, the total B field in the vicinity of the loop for this orientation of the loop is B applied, which is the light green, plus B loop, and meaning that the total B field here in the vicinity in the middle of the loop is greater than B applied. So another way to look at the rotation of the loop in the applied B field is that the current loop wants to rotate until its own B field is aligned with the applied B field. Other materials and objects that have a magnetic field or a magnetic moment will also want to have their magnetic fields align with any applied magnetic field. For example, a bar magnet has a B field just like a wire loop. Notice the magnetic moment here, just like our current loop had. As a result, the bar magnet will also feel a torque so that its magnetic moment, M, and its B field will want to be aligned with B applied, just as for the current loop. And this is exactly how a compass needle works. After the alignment, the total B field in the vicinity of the bar magnet is stronger than the applied B field, just as we had for the current loop also. So what we can learn from this is that if we put a bar magnet within our wire loop, so here is our wire loop with the current flowing in it. If we had a, a bar magnet in the middle of it, the presence of the magnetic material will create a stronger B field in the loop than if the wire loop had just air or some other non-magnetic material inside of it. Bar magnets are typically made of a ferromagnetic material like iron or nickel or cobalt which have quadrillions of tiny magnetic domains like the ones you can see here. And you might, be even, you might even be able to see these under a microscope. In the absence of an applied magnetic field, all of these domains are randomly oriented. All these green magnetic domains here. And so if you were to add all these magnetic moments, all these green arrows together, they would all cancel, uh, cancel out. But if a magnetic field from an external source be applied is, a, is applied, each magnetic domain will partially or completely align with the applied field, which is what you can see here, all these dark green arrows wanting to align with the light green arrows. And how well of an alignment we get depends on the material. With the magnetic domains aligned, a net internal magnetic flux density, B induced, arises within the ferromagnetic material. So if I were to sum up all these dark green arrows, I would get a total B induced. So then we have B total in this ferromagnetic material is B applied plus B induced, which is greater than be applied. Remember 
how we quantified the reduction of electric fields in a dielectric material with uh, rotating dipoles. They would create an electric field that would actually point in the opposite direction of the applied electric field. And we could quantify this reduction of the electric field using relative permittivity. Now we can quantify the increase of the B field in a magnetic material by defining a relative permeability, mu r. So that is the B total, um, and this is ferromagnetic material, over B applied. And that would be as if in a vacuum. So values of mu r range from 1 for air to even bigger than 100 for ordinary iron and even uh, so 1 uh, and up to even greater than 10,000 for specialty ferromagnetic materials such as mu middle. So for example, if the wire loops in our magnetotorker have iron cores, so iron has mu r equal to 300, then the B loop that will be created, or the B total, will be 300 times larger than the same wire loop would have with an air core. And as a result of the stronger B field, less current will be needed in the wire loop to create the same amount of torque. So just as for the D field, the final note I'll make here is that H, remember B is equal to mu H. So H is the same in all materials, just like we saw the D field was the same in all materials. So in, in air, we have B is equal to mu naught mu R times H, and mu R is equal to 1 here. And in a magnetic material, B again is equal to mu naught mu R times the same H, but mu R can be different, okay, it would be different for a magnetic material. All right, take out your in-class project notebooks one last time and describe how we can use less current in our wire loops if we have a ferromagnetic material inside the wire loops of the magnetotorker.